Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogma333, and welcome back to hell. Now, in the last video, we cut a bit early. We went through a war with uh, Mr. Sverdlovsk over here, and we decided to uh, cut it quick, mainly because the clock was ticking quite literally. And so I went back and I redid some stuff, and by redid, I mean I just constantly next them. We're still on the seventh hour, slowly slipping forward, and we have time to check out this new focus tree. So, let's get started, shall we? Let's start with the Arsenal of Damocles. Western Siberia and its vast, heaven-sent resources have finally been annexed into the Regency's demands. This is cause for celebration, for now we have all that we need to advance our special weapon in this program to the next development state stage of development, excuse me. Our enemies have yet have had their bi own biological weapon programs. Better yet, we have facilities to make use of their designs in the now liberated Judeo Plut plutocratic state of Zlatost. There, new instruments of death will be forged with which to scour the land of evil. So we're working on nukes. It's always fun stuff. Uh, we'll move our troops onto the Kazakh border right now. And then to Wonders... Oh, fuck my arm, god damn it. So we're doing some stuff with that. We'll see what happens there. Corn up the territory. It takes... Far too little time to core it all up, but that's besides the point. Then it's been re-inaugurated. We're gonna go be, be going through some of the uh, same starting stuff at first. Let's start. Let's go with a mandate from heaven. From here, just as Israel is granted the chosen people, God has granted Western Siberia to the Russians. The might of our arms remains unvanquished. Despite the assaults of hell's minions upon our holy nation, the Lord smiles upon his pious servants, and the mandate expands. But the Lord's blessings are conditionally granted. He will never grant a favor to those who skirk their duties or flee from tribulations. Sabir must present a new challenge to us, but it will not be met, not be met with uncertainty and fear. It will be met with an iron resolve, unwavering faith, and the edge of a blade. So on we go. How's our economy doing? We have a $17 billion deficit. Allegedly. Allegedly. You have a mandate from heaven. <clears throat> Tabritsky stood upon the summit of Mount Yamantau, gazing down upon the vast forest and steppes of Siberia beyond. All of it. Tiumen, Omsk, Sverdlovsk. It was his. It was God's. From the Ural Mountains to the Taiga bordering central Siberia, the divine rule of a regency had spread its wings to bathe fully half of Russia in the safety of its shadow. Awareness of his power strengthened him, filling his aging bones with vigor, but he knew the fight was far from over. Orders still had to be brought from the east to the shores of Lake Baikal, and then to the Pacific, but... A frigid wind swept down from the north, making him shiver despite his greatcoat. He knew that Siberia held many perils of its own, and purifying it in its entirety would be a challenge far greater than any he had yet faced. Yet he had to do it. He had to spread God's light to the furthest reaches of Russia. Only when it shone from the deserts of Kazakhstan to the frozen north would his rule be secure. Dabritsky blinked away the sky as it began to dance across the horizon. Now wasn't the time. He turned and marched back to his helicopter, pondering all the ways in which his new conquest might best be purified. The second trial begins. We must have faith.
Hmm. Let's go for second cleansing. I mean, doesn't that sound fun? Fuck. Beyond the Urals, countless degenerates found shelter. Amongst criminals, reds, devil worshippers, and masterless soldiers, subhumans blend in rather well. But they cannot hide from the faithful. It will take much time and effort, but God is on our side. The mountains and forests will offer no refuge. Pure-hearted Siberians, once their faith is renewed, will surely join with us in pursuit of the enemy. We shall achieve what the Israelites could not, and cleanse the promised land in its entirety. Well, you know, just take a massive 50% hit to our population growth. You know, nothing too big. Along with 35% we already have. I think there's like, what, uh... I don't know if it's still a place for all of us. I think that, um... We already read this, so we'll refrain from doing anything else. Doing it again. Blessed are the war makers. The clock has struck the eighth hour. Slowly slipping forward. Past the horizon shines the truth of the light of truth. Let us get Skyward Swords. To deliver divine punishment from long range is a beautiful thing. The Germans, Japanese, and Americans all possess the capacity to destroy one another in an instant. They each have an arsenal of nuclear missiles, which combined could raise entire continents in a storm of atomic fire. Despite protestations to the contrary, they also probably have similar systems for delivery of chemical and biological agents. Our own rocket tree program shall be made a priority with the right funding and resources, we can build an arsenal that will allow us to engulf entire nations in clouds of billowing, toxic death. Onwards. We need not invest, for God will guide us here. Let us consider our destiny. Even though it probably doesn't do anything. Next, let's get some sacrificial lambs. Testing chemical weapons in the laboratory is simple. With the press of a button, one can immediately see the effects on a human body. Adjustments can be made on the fly without any of the difficulties involved in testing something like a rocket. For that, we require suitable targets, and of course, our own subjects are not suitable for this purpose. Thankfully, just over the southern border of our realm, there is a land filled with nothing but degenerate barbarians. Their crude villages dotted along the frontier are oblivious to our might, and far from anyone who might protect them. Surely we speak for everyone when we ask, who will miss, miss them? It's not fucking around. Let's exert some influence in Kazakhstan while we're here. By exert influence, I mean prepare to murder them. Or just start things with a nuclear strike, as as you do. Do a casual chemical attack on them. You know, as you do, as normal sane people do. Let's define subhumanity. We have, since our rise to power, relied only on the direct commands of the regent in our crusade against impurity. The majority of our policies with regards to subhumans are informal, based on old maxims from the days when our arm was merely, merely a paramilitary. This is not the most efficient system. The regent has been informed of these difficulties that these circumstances have imposed upon us, and has graciously declared 
that he shall remedy it immediately. The imperial code of racial purity, as dubbed his divine work, will show God's chosen people the way to heaven. Iberian Council has been abolished. Well, you know how that's going to turn out. Just train a fucking army, right? Let's train two armies. <clears throat> the regent growled in frustration and scrunched up another rough draft before tossing it into the bin beside his desk. He fumed silently, silently as he fetched another piece of paper and slumped back into his chair. Pen at the ready for when inspiration struck. Details, details, details. He loathed the sort of drudgery, but knew it to be necessary. He knew subhumans on sight, of course. The telltale signs were present in their eyes, in their manner, in the way they moved. But other men, lesser men, were blind compared to him. Barring obvious physical features, there was no way for them to spot infiltrators in their midst. No doubt, some were happy to be so naturally ignorant, but it meant less work for them to do. He'd have to see to that as well. Reinstate flogging, maybe. The Jew is most easily recognizable by its physical features, he began muttering as he wrote. These include the following, a large hooked nose, curly hair, a swarthy countenance, dark eyes, compulsive behavior in the presence of gold, and so on. An hour later, Tabrick's work was done. The first chapter of the Imperial Codex of Racial Purity was complete. Now. Where to begin with the Tatars? A great educator, our regent. Slock still slips forward. It's time for the Caucasian method. Thus far, we have utilized conventional means of decontamination. Guns, knives, gas, and so on. Unfortunately, none of these are particularly efficient. It takes hours of work to clear a village of undesirables, especially if they have taken measures to conceal themselves. But, perhaps there's an alternative. A better way. One that has the same outcome, but with the added benefit of bolstering the output of our farms, factories, and mines. The life of a degenerate is worthless, but his labor might not be. Now I'm worried the clock might be going too slow. That's not, now it might take a while for all this to happen. Let's get basic, basic jet casts. Next, chemical terror bombings. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Many of the region's subjects still resent the Germans of their constant bombing raids on their homeland. Of course, they cannot be blamed on the Germans, had the people of Russia shown more faith in God and dedication themselves to the region earlier. Perhaps he would have seen fit to spare them from suffering. As always, the blessed region has a more nuanced understanding of the matter. The bombings may have been intended to bring back the Russians back to God, but for those already enlightened, they were intended to inspire. Lazy jet bombers carrying out blessed purification from miles above the sinful earth. Such is the fusion of German tactics and Russian piety. No disloyal village or polluted city in all Siberia is beyond the reach of our sacred arms. So yeah, we're doing some... I can't even make a joke about light genocide. This is just... Genocide. Let's be the clock up. With fires of redemption. In terms of crimes against God and Empire, there are few so heinous as blasphemy. 
Thus saith the Lord, Every sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven men, but the blasphemy of a spirit shall not be forgiven. In times past, all God-fearing Russians knew the correct punishment for this gravest of sins. When their faith began to waver with the arrival of degenerate modernity, they foolishly abandoned it, refusing to harden their hearts even in the face of a blackest sin. The region has decreed that we shall tolerate the evil of blasphemy no longer. The appropriate punishment will be reintroduced immediately. Thus do we glorify the Lord. Oh, we have dockyards now. Where do we have dockyards? Forkuta! Forkuta dockyards, okay. Oh, now we've cored everything up, so we got tons of fun stuff we can start building. So long. <clears throat> Heretics and blasphemers can offer no excuse for their crimes, shouted the Stromoviki sergeant, pacing back and forth on the stage erected in the town square. He carried a lit torch in his hand. To pardon them is only to further is only for is to only further shroud humanity's light with the darkness of our souls for these wretches death alone cannot suffice to extinguish their evil it must also serve to purify the souls of the faithful and thereby wither the weeds of deviancy that have sprouted in their minds before him stood a stake some eight feet tall tied to it with firewood piled around his legs so town's esteemed priest father tikhon hear me he cried out blood trickling through his br thick brown beard the regent is the true blasphemer. He is a murderer, a traitor to God and Russia. Please, my brothers and sisters, find the courage to rise up. Cast down the tyrants. Their hate can never overcome Christ's love. Silence! Roared the sar sergeant, eyes bloodshot and bulging with fanatical rage. Heretic Tikhon, with the crime of blasphemy against God and his blessed regent, I consign you to the flames. Hellfire takes you, sinner. Well, fat he cast a torch into the oil doused tinder. Within seconds, a priest was engulfed in flames. For all of his wisdom, all his love for the people, all his courage and tenderness, Father Tacon died screaming within the raging fire. The spark of his defiance smothered forever. Let burning heretics light our way to heaven. Let's go back to nukes. That's somehow a more enlightening idea. Or I guess chemical warfare. Phosphine gas, mustard gas, and sarin gas are all capable and useful tools in our arsenal. With these ingenious chemical weapons, entire cities have been subdued and thousands of noisome parasites exterminated. The region believes that yet more deadly secrets remain to be discovered, and has ordered our chemists and engineers to begin experimentation at once. There are ample supplies of materials at hand, and plenty of learned men who could per be pressed into service. So we lose the National Spirit Restricted Chemical Arsenal, Unrestricted Chemical Arsenal, and then we gain the National Spirit Unrestricted Chemical Arsenal. Checks out, I guess. Huh. Wait a minute, we've done this before. No, really, we have. Oh, well, no lives wasted. Not all slaves are useful workers. There are plenty who refuse to take up their tools, make a habit of trying to escape, or simply lack the strength to survive hard labor. The usual salute solution to these problematic individuals is a bullet to the back of the head, but the region has devised a brilliant alternative. Any scientific endeavors require test subjects. We hear that in degenerate nations like America, small rodents are preferred. Their scientists are weak, feeble. 
Ours recognize that a very specific kind of rat makes for far more interesting and reliable subjects. Better army professionalism, beautiful. Okay, you go, you go back, attack there. Another insurrection in Oman, you say? Who would have thunk it? That was a speed. Steadily grinding forward. Take him out. Next, let's go ahead and uh, get the spark going. Recently, we have been enlightened to the existence in our territory of a particular element that has deeply intrigued the region, uranium, a relatively abundant radioactive material that serves as a basis for that which previously lay beyond our reach, nuclear power. This region is positively giddy with excitement, as all are, are all of his most loyal subjects. He's directed large numbers of slaves and all requisite equipment to Omsk, where the largest deposits have been found. Today, we take the first step towards acquisition of the ultimate weapon. I'm curious, have we tested? Yeah, we have already tested them successfully, so... <clears throat> Report! On the effectiveness of an experimental compound, C-3244, a.k.a. Taborite. Summary. Twelve test subjects were introduced to the testing chamber, all individuals from different racial backgrounds. All were in fine health and of young age, ranging from 15 to 30. Subjects demonstrated confusion and some degree of resistance, liking, likely owing to their good physical status. Compound C-3244 was introduced via pumps 30 seconds after the chamber was sealed. Effects were immediate and drastic. Dense nature, nature of gas caused rapid onset of symptoms. Coughing shortness of breath became almost immediately eaten after exposure. Subjects began coughing blood, luckily showing breakdown of lung tissue. Corrosive nature of compounds was readily apparent. Skin began to burn and blister less than 30 seconds after exposure. Close inspection revealed that gums were bleeding, and skin appeared to be actively dissolving at a slow rate. All test su 12 subjects were confirmed deceased within 3 minutes. Uncertain what denseness of gas is required to cause rapid corrosion of organic matter, but the rapid onset of desired symptoms is a promising sign. Test subjects continue to rapidly disintegrate after death. Test chamber is yet to be cleaned, as nobody has a stomach to enter, we are unable to drain the thick organic slurry that is formed from the flesh, blood, and organs of a deceased subjects. God save the region. Our region is a great patron of the sciences. Uh, he's a something alright. I already read that this time. There go the Kazakhs. Now we'll move on that border and prepare for time. There we go, we have a spark. Cleanliness is godliness. The poor of Russia are not the one poor of which Jesus spoke. The true poor are those who are of the pure race, but devoid of all that such a status deserves. Christ would approve of what we are about to do with the unwashed masses who sully our street. The truth, as elucidated by the blessed region, is that the poor are merely degenerate beasts who have escaped judgment for too long. What explanation for their supposed plight can there be besides impiety or Jewish subversion? The region knows exactly what must be done, the same as with any other verminous scum that threaten the sanctity of our empire. I mean, you can't have any poor people 
if you kill all the poor people. So they have a point there. Well, Russia must stand alone. Is this where we left off? Our splendor is unmatched in all the world. I think we're one. We we left off one ahead last time. I mean, that's fine, you know, I wasn't too, I'm not too eager to, uh, strike midnight quite yet. Things drop tanks. And then... Salvation through sacrifice. Holy Russia faces a threat like no others. For untold centuries, was subhuman menace has gnawed at the foundations of our godly civilization. J Jews corrupt minds. Tatars slaughter our people. And the Malarosi betray us to the enemy every chance they get. Their infestation runs deep, like a cancerous hive. Bolsheviks and liberals think them indispensable to Russia, and they constantly seek to integrate themselves. Oh, ingratiate themselves. Offering a hand open in friendship with the other concealed the knife behind their back, they have propagated amongst the pure race for so long that they often seem indistinguishable from us. A lesser man might despair at the situation, but not the regent. For God himself speaks to him, and has revealed the truth, that no innocent life lost in the purest of purity, pursuit of purity, will be in vain. Facing uncertainty, kill them all. God will know his own. Place with cleansing to Siberia with Siberian terror. Which I believe that's going to take 25% for population. We're already at 75% monthly population. So we're going to lose a whole 100% monthly population. A month. <clears throat> hey, you! Barked a commanding voice from behind Samuel. Stop where you are! He complied, hands shooting up in the air instinctively. A wise decision, he also heard a rifle being cocked. A uniformed soldier stepped in front of him, face covered by a balaclava. Only his eyes, devoid of pity, shone out from among the black wool. They tracked up and down, taking in the sight of Samui's filthy matted beard and ragged clothing. <laughs> Homeless? Yes, sir, he said timidly. What did these men want with him? He wasn't a red or a Jew or whatever. He was just trying to survive on the streets of Siktiv Kar. Soldiers produced bare handcuffs. Hands out. You're under arrest. Samuel could only stammer the protest as his hands were drawn behind his back and cuffed. The cold steel was poorly forged and was too tight around his wrist. What have I done? Please, please sir, I'm just a, a vagrant. What? You haven't been paying attention to the decree that's gone out up all over the city. He clips Samuel around the ear, knocking him to the ground. <laughs> you blind or something? Answer me, you fuck! A swift click in the gut followed, and the old man curled up, sobbing quietly. <sighs> Private, get this piece of shit to the truck. Shoot him if he tries to run. I'm gonna see if he's got any friends hiding around here. <laughs> what decree? I can't even read! Yeah, our uh, poverty rate is not doing too hot right now. Our research is doing okay, though. Our industrial expertise is alright. Uh. Always look on the bright side of life. Do do, do do, do do, do do. How appropriate would it be if it was Yagoda at the end who we fought? It would be thematically appropriate. Let's recover some lost knowledge. It is said that the Bolsheviks, probably following the urging of their genocidal Jewish overlords, were experimenting with nuclear weapon power before the German invasion. And we should thank God that neither they nor the, the profligate West attained such power before Germany did. 
As a result of a Soviet collapse, the scientists involved in the nuclear program scattered to the winds. Some have been found hiding amongst the region's own subjects. Their knowledge will be at our disposal, one way or the other. Scientists are frail, feeble men without the will to endure interrogation. If they will not work with us, we can at least extract the information we need to educate their more loyal colleagues. President of Ho Chi Minh. Pre Death of Ho Chi Minh. President Ho Chi Minh. That's what I meant. Let's try to consider our destiny a little bit. Meanwhile, we got some more generals. We got Mian Drove. It doesn't have any promotion options, so I don't know why it's fucking telling me that they do. Or oh, the Chev doesn't either. I should fucking kill someone for doing this to me. National focus set. Let's look towards heaven's light. God favors us. He has granted unto us the knowledge with which we can build our very own sword of Damocles. We have begun along the path leading to that which the blessed region has sought for so long. A weapon to surpass all others. When Zarvik Alexei assumes the throne, his rule will be unassailable by mortal men. Any threat to his sacred immense will be met with an unrelenting nuclear firestorm, the likes of which none could ever hope to match. Never again, not from now till the end of time, will Bolsheviks, Jews, subhumans, or traitors ever threaten the Holy Russian Empire. God wills it. Our enemies will be swept away by our divine radiance. We replace non-nuclear power with a single nuclear weapon. Which will really up the cost for our military, but... You know, what are you going to do? I mean, what is money? Hmm? It seems that the CSR is mostly winning. Yeah, they're winning. Or they're pushing through it, at least. Turn to the Reds. And here we are. We have a nuke, boys. Let's look towards the war within. Treason's like a tree. It leaves its leaves, green and filled with life, wave gently in the wind and paint an idyllic picture, while beneath the soil its roots spread like a plague and corrupt all they touch. Even the most pure of Russians is not immune to this vile infection, it seems. They gather in their homes, in the streets, in the churches. They blaspheme against a blessed region, decrying him as, one can scarcely believe it, a tyrant and a heretic. Even our own holy men have been subverted by the Jewry, condemning his eminence as a new and teach us epiphanies. We know not how our own people can be led astray so easily, but this Jewish devilry must be excised at once. So yeah, we're going against the church. That the clock's only slowly slipping forward. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love utmo uttermost seats in synagogue and salutation from the marketplace. Thus spake the Lord. Spake the Lord. You mean spoke the war? I don't know. What would... Would that we had heeded his words? Would that the clergy had but a single neck, so that we might strangle it? The priests, the nuns, the monks, they have not been so loyal as they dared profess. 
Their hearts are full of treason, hearsay, and sympathy for the Jew. We should have known that the depths of their evil when they first balked at our cleansing of Holy Russia. What is the price of a priest? How many silver shekels does it cost to turn a holy man against God himself? We'll set this matter right, no matter how much clerical blood we have to spill to free ourselves from satanic corruption. So let's get new artillery, guys. <clears throat> Seems like I shall require new servants. Now that we're caught up on the ones we've read already. Oh, it's nice that we have universal health care. As Tabaritsky. Oh, you know, uh. Fuck. The fucking Holy Russian Empire has that, and America doesn't. That, that, that's that's interesting. I'm 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 gonna throw that out there. The air cries out for purity, and we must answer. <clears throat> I KNEW IT! <laughs> Tabertsky screamed. He hurled his wine glass against the walls, where it shattered into a thousand tiny shards. Pharisical traitors! Marxist rats! Impotently raging within his office, Tabertsky could feel the blood vessels bulging his forehead. Snakes. Devils. You. You. You Jew-loving scum! The urge to seize his pistol, storm out of the place, and shoot the dead the first place he saw was overwhelming, but he gritted his teeth and clenched his fist, trying to force the anger down to a simmer. Betrayal, again. He'd seen it coming months ago, knew that he could never trust the clergy who constantly doubted and questioned his divine power. That was a Jewish way, wasn't it? Question after question after question, question everything, spit on holiness without ever trusting in the faith they so readily espoused. Well... He had a solution for this. The church needed its new St. Peter, a great leader to show the way and slice the fat until only the flesh and blood of true believers remained. He'd show them those signs of Lucifer, Prince of Lies, damned priest. Snatching up his journal and sitting down cross-legged before the hearth, he began scrawling out a new decree. Henceforth, all clergy of the Russian Orthodox Church. Traitors. Sons of Cain. Protectors of the wicked. With that, I hear the rats in the walls. Comparisons to cockroaches are most apt to describe subhumans, considering recent news. We have learned that the Stromoviki are not so capable as their commanders claimed. Countless thousands of Jews, degenerates, traitors, and other vermin have escaped them. Worse still, they've been protected by our own supposedly loyal brothers of the pure race. It defies belief that the region's own people, God's chosen race, are so thoroughly corrupted. Is this, too, the doing of Lucifer? What other explanation could there be? The region is incapable of error. Whatever the reason, we must meet this challenge with sword in hand, executing the lying Sturmoviki, we're doubling our efforts and meet, meet out swift, deadly justice to every Jew sympathizer we find. So we're just gonna lose 10,000 population, nothing. No biggie. <sighs> Consider our destiny. Let's give the purity order next. The church can never again be trusted. Even bishops and grand masters were turned to treason by Jewish gold and Satan's promise of power. There's only one solution to turn back the clock, to demolish the rotten structure, to burn it all down. The blessed region will be 
as a new St. Peter, the rock upon which a new pure church is built. The first step in this process is to ensure the loyalty of our holy men, so that there is no need for another great purge. All that is needed for this is a few good men, drawn from the most loyal, Vestrimoviki. This purity order will carry out inspections, provide guidance to local priests, and enforce mandatory church attendance. The true faith is not yet lost. Improved jet fighters. Oh. At dawn, it is not just night that dies, it is man in his becoming. And the warm blood staining the pavement as a ward that is just starting. Riccardo Monarini. Hot Ottomans. Let's get some, uh, some stuff, add stuff going. And there's no such thing as innocence. Among the regent's blessings is a fraction of a lord's omniscience. He knows the hearts of men and imparts this knowledge to his chosen servants. Nobody brought before the, the imperial courts is free of sin. They are wretched in treachery, heresy flowing in blood. A plea of innocence in our courts is therefore guilty of wasting our time, along with whatever other offenses the defendant has committed. There's no need for due process when our judicial system is directed directly guided by God himself. Yeah, I mean, due process, what, 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 what the fuck is that? You know? So we have a broken cross. Siberian terror, where we're losing a 100% monthly population. Yeah, we have no gain from our population. Still universal healthcare somehow. I don't know how that works, but, uh, yeah. Okay. The death sentences were harsh and swift. Death! Roared the judge, appointed personally by the regent. Death! 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 Such was every sentence, as of that fateful morning's decree. Theft. Death. Murder. Death. Deviancy. Defeatism. Indolence. Death. The butchery was beyond imagining. Prisoners and camp inmates were shipped to makeshift courts and by the truckload, all fated for the same sentence and the same end. First, there was a single mass grave outside the capital. Then two. Then three. By the week's end, thousands were dead. The execution ground soaked through with blood. Strumoviki began to request breaks on the second day, but there was no such thing as a transfer in their unit. The regent, they were told, was seeing the whole bloody affair through personally, so it was only fitting for his soldiers to follow suit. So was that the questionings began? Worrying, treasonous questions. In the sentence of treason? Death. The bodies continued to pile up. More mass graves were dug, and the regent's fury was unending. Mercies for God, and God alone. Civilian in no no. Oh 
Well, let's go to the villages of the damned. The traditional hierarchy of the Apostolic Church has been tested and found wanting. The bishops who profess loyalty to the Blessed Regent were traitors to a man, secretly working to hollow out the foundations of their reborn empire. The serpentine spirit of Satan lurks in their hearts. There is only one possible cure for such weakness. Wickedness. To fill up the void left by our righteous cleansing, we shall have to elevate new pure-hearted men in the bishop's stead. With the church so thoroughly corrupted, we cannot trust any man of a cloth, no matter how lowly. Only the region's hand-picked subjects are worthy of bearing the responsibility of shepherding the Lord's flock. His, his word is God's word, and God knows what is best for his church. Perhaps he does. Only one way to find out. May the clock tick on.